Today I mount the front plastics with my battery box grommets and I design and print a battery box spacer. This is how my 3D printed grommets work. That's the top hat section there pressed through from the top and that ring presses over the uh, bottom of it. It's, it's pushing the other one through, I haven't got two hands. To end up looking like that flush on this side with the spacer, a screw with a washer on it like that comes down through the top and tightens up tight against the spacer acting like a shoulder so that it compresses the rubber a little bit, only about half a millimetre. They call this a cushion in the parts manual, I was looking at it last night and the spacer dimensions are exactly the same as what I guessed they would be and you can buy the cushion and the spacer and the screw as a uh, separate parts in the parts list. Anyway, that's going to work fine. That's those screws in the bottom. The next problem I'd like to solve is that the current battery I use doesn't fit down in that lower section of the battery compartment and it is certainly not wide enough for the higher section. It actually just teeters on the very edge of that battery higher section and without much effort the battery will tip into the hole either that way or that way if it falls off that edge. I'm going to print up a frame that holds the battery centered over that lower section and spaced out so that it is positioned by the length of the higher section and uh, won't be able to tip into the hole. The battery I'm using is Century battery, a YTX14FA, which is what I've got in at least two of my other bikes. It's a readily available one here in Australia. It's uh, This one cost me $128. I think they normally go now to about $150. That's an AGM style battery. Has worked well for me in the past. That's a very simple design in Fusion 360. And this is what the design looks like in Cura Slicer. I've sped this bit of video up around four times. My mate's Bamboo Labs X1 Carbon can print up to seven times quicker than my Creality Ender 3. It would cut the print time down on this piece of plastic from around six hours to one hour. Help me convince my missus that I need one. Well, that's my battery in place. You can see my spacer thing down the side there. This uh, has now got no side to side movement. It can still rock forward and that's what that clip over the top restricts, but pull that out. Battery is a tight fit between this edge and that edge. This is my spacer straight off the printer this afternoon finished while I was eating dinner. It's just a simple thing took a while to print. You never know until you come out and drop the thing in place whether it's going to fit now. It fits in there pretty bloody well. It doesn't move around back to front or side to side whatsoever. Pretty pleased with that. As you can see, this edge here and that edge there retain the battery central. The battery just drops in there nicely on top of that. So that's a win. That's the battery powered light, which is a quad bike headlight be it a replacement one LED that I've been using that set up on my sand blaster and I've set it up on that plank of wood up above directly above my battery there I can 
flick it on which increases the light directly over where I'm filming so that's going to be a bit of a filming aid particularly late in the day when there's not a lot of light coming in the garage door it was 40 celsius here today I spent about an hour mid-morning on the computer I got the printer going by lunchtime I tidied up some files and started editing this avoiding the afternoon heat a fun but not very productive day